Hello, and welcome to Lighting in Layers. I'm Lee Varis, your host for this Photoshop tutorial. I'm going to be looking at a technique for creating sophisticated lighting effects by capturing different light sources in separate exposures and blending them in Photoshop. Mastering photography is all about controlling light. I will examine the construction of a still life image and show how we can capture different light sources for the same subject in separate exposures. Combine those exposures by blending only the parts we need for the desired effect using layer masks and colorizing certain layers to create a gelled lighting effect. This tutorial will use this basic still life image. I captured a variety of different light sources and directions with the intention of layering them up one on top of the other in Photoshop to create a combined effect. Photoshop allows me to blend everything together to paint with light and arrive at this final image. Along the way we will be learning about layers and layer masks, multiply and screen blend modes, layer groups and clipping masks, and a hue saturation adjustment layers. Okay, let's take a deep breath, turn off your phone, Roll up your sleeves and let's begin. Okay, here I am. Um, I have shot several different uh, exposures and different light directions for this basic still life here. And uh, I started off with this one where it's a sort of straightforward fill light from a big softbox. You can see the reflection of the softbox in the wine bottles here. And my intention was to uh, shoot all the different directions and qualities of light separately so that I could layer them up on top of each other and build up a combined effect. Uh, I started, I'm going to start the uh, layering process with this as the background image and then I'm going to place a sky on top of it uh, and that way we'll create a self-masked uh, effect. But before I do that, I want to fix any possible defects that I have in this image because as we move along, all of these little things will be visible. So for instance, like I don't like this little hot spot in the, in the wine bottle uh, and I don't like this, this little reflection here. So I'm going to eliminate those. And uh, like any retouching, I'm going to make an empty layer. So I'll go down here to the bottom of the layers panel and uh, click on the new layer icon. And I have a new empty layer and this is uh, retouching. Okay, so I can actually uh, use black paint or I can cover up these little spots over here with black certainly. And uh, we'll, we'll use 100% opacity and just cover those right up. And then I've got another little area down here. I can cover that up. And since that's a nice straight line, here's a little tip for eliminating um, that line in one fell swoop. I'm going to click once with my brush just to cover the end of that line. And then I'll hold down the Shift key and move to the other end of the line and click again. And I draw a straight line that, that now covers up that straight line. Now up here, uh, I'm going to use the spot healing brush because um, I'll get a better blend this way. I'll just go ahead and cover that up and it blends nicely. I'm using content aware and sample all layers here in order to achieve that uh, retouch. Toggling this on and off, I can see that I've covered up my defects nicely. Is there anything else I want to cover up at this point? Um, I don't think so. A little spot here and there's a little white line down here okay so there was something to cover up um, right okay I think I'm going to well no I'll leave that alone that's the, the background seen through the neck of the bottle. The wine is filled up to here, and this top part is a cork. So that will uh, come in handy later on. Um, 
Okay, now I'm ready to add my background sky. So here is a photo that I took of a sunset. And I'm going to drag this on top of that silhouette file. So I'll hold down the Shift key. I use my Move tool here, click somewhere inside the image, and hold down the Shift key. That way, when I drop it on top of the other image, it will drop into the center. And since these are resized the same way, they will line up. So I've moved towards that, that tab there for the wine A. And it's come forward. So now I still hold down the mouse and the Shift key. And I'm going to drop it right down into the center here. OK. Holding down the Shift key causes this to line up perfectly. And now it's covering up the whole image. And the secret here to this effect is to change this layer from normal blending mode to multiply. OK, and I'm going to call this sky. All right. Now let's move on. I'm going to take my main lighting shot here, and I'm going to drag that on top of the whole group. So again, Holding down the Shift key and using the Move tool, I drag up to that tab, drag down, and let go, all while holding down the Shift key. So now I've got this in place. And now the secret here is to turn this from normal to screen. So you see the sky was darkened over the background. So the the it can only darken this light background. All the black stuff, it can't make it any darker. So Multiply says darken everything underneath it with the pixels in this layer. And so I've achieved that sort of self-mask silhouette effect. Now when I add the light on top of that, in screen mode, I can only lighten things in the underlying layers. And since the background in this image, if I go back to normal, you see the background is black. It cannot have any effect in screen mode. And so it's basically invisible. OK, so I'm not going to use this at full strength just yet. I'm going to reduce the opacity of that. And uh, this is just going to be sort of general ambient fill. And let's name this A. OK. And I'm going to now uh, mask off things that I don't want to show up. So in order to do that, I need a layer mask. I'm going to go down here to the bottom of the Layers panel and add a layer mask. And it's a white layer mask now. So when I paint into that white layer mask with black, I will be hiding things that I don't want to see. So I'll have to get a brush here. And let's zoom in a little bit. So I want to hide these reflections for sure. I'll resize this brush up a little bit. and. I just paint it out with black at 100% opacity. I'm hiding all those unwanted reflections. In fact, I'm going to hide all of these in here, too. I don't like any of those extra reflections, because we're going to have some nice ones to put in there later. OK. And here as well, we'll paint this out. And uh, this reflection on the side is OK. Uh, I would like to feather it somewhat. So I'm going to reduce the opacity of my brush here to 30% and, and just sort of gradually feather that out. OK. And uh, same thing over here. Uh, I'm just going to kind of feather that out on that edge. Put a little shadow in there. And this one I don't like at all, so I'm going to paint that out completely. It's kind of looks like sort of a double reflection. I don't like it. And a little tiny thing here is kind of annoying. So we'll paint that out as well. And over here, I notice I've got kind of a double image. The, the leaf apparently moved a little bit. Uh, and in the uh, subsequent exposures, it's, it's out of register. Uh, so I'm going to 
kind of feather this out a bit here and create kind of a shadowed edge, hide that little highlight edge there. And we'll just sort of feather in a little nice little kind of shadow over that leaf. Now I'm doing this now because I know that I have a kind of a more interesting light to appear on this leaf uh, later on. So I'm just kind of creating a little more shading or shadowing over this leaf because I want a very dramatic edge lighting that, that comes in from another photograph. And let's feather out this line here. Okay, I've got some reflections on there I want to get rid of, especially this one right here. So uh, again, painting with 100%, I can just sort of take that out completely. Um, and there's a sort of, I don't know, furry kind of reflection here. Uh, let's, let's take that out and we'll leave a kind of a nice little strip, kind of feather that edge out. Okay. All right, the next thing I want to do is create a kind of um, spotlight effect here on these uh, labels. The labels are lit in the same layer, so I'm going to duplicate that layer by uh, dragging it down to the new layer icon at the bottom of the layers panel. And now I've got a, a, a copy that doubles the intensity. Uh, now I just want to add in just a little bit into that label, so I'm going to throw away this la layer mask and replace it with another one. So I'm going to drag the layer mask thumbnail to the trash icon at the bottom of the layers panel to throw it away, and I get this little dialog. Uh, and I don't want to apply the layer mask, I just want to get rid of it, so I'm going to hit delete here. And now I'm going to hide this whole layer with a black layer mask. And the shortcut to do that is to hold down the Option or Alt key when you click on the layer mask icon at the bottom of the layers panel. And so now I have a black layer mask. And now if I paint in with light, I will get the, the effect of the lighting in this layer. Uh, and I'm going to bring the opacity back up to 100% because I want to really light up those wine labels. So I'm going to use white. And I'm painting with white this time into a black layer mask. And I've got just kind of a nice little spotlight effect happening there. Let me zoom in a little bit. And I just want to really get that sort of brand identity spotlighted in very nicely here. So I've got a soft spot hitting those uh, wine labels. And I want to strengthen this edge light right here. So I'm going to go ahead and paint in a little bit extra there to get a little extra edge, light, edge lighting in there. Okay, so far so good. All right, so I, I've, I've got my first lighting layers applied in and now I'm going to move on to the next image in the, in the sequence here. So I've got this one uh, which is what we've we've done uh, over here. Actually, I mislabeled it. See, so I should be calling this B. So d double click on the the name there, and I can edit it. And that's the copy. And this is B. And now we're going to add the other lighting layers on top. So let's move over here. This one uh, is our next uh, layer. Grab my Move tool, again, holding down the Shift key. Drag on top of that. The tab comes forward. Drag down and let go, all while holding on the Shift key. OK, so this layer, I'm going to move to the top of the stack here. And I'm going to be screening it on top of everything else. So I change my Apply Mode to Screen. And we'll call that C. And we'll hide it. So again, holding down Option or Alt, when I click on the layer mask icon at the bottom of the layers panel, I hide it. And now I will paint in with white where I want that light to show. 
So in this case, what this was doing, that's the C here, that's giving me this highlight on the edge of the bottle. So I'm going to paint that in only where I need it, which is uh, on the edge of the bottle. So we'll just kind of paint that in. And I can see that I'm going to have to do a little bit of editing to this. So I'm painting this in on the edge of the bottle. And I'm going to go back and, and undo this by painting with black. So I'll switch the foreground and background colors by hitting the X key. And then I'm going to just paint out the parts that I don't want to show up, including this little reflection of the, that's the edge of the, the white card actually showing up. And then I want to come in here and kind of fix this little, I don't want that reflection showing up or this one. I want to kind of create a smooth transition in the bottle. Uh, back in the day when we shot film, this sort of stuff was literally impossible to do. You just couldn't do it. Kind of feathering this edge again. Um, I want that to be sort of a soft transition from the edge of the bottle into the interior of the bottle. So I'm just kind of feathering it a little bit, soften that edge. Okay, now I've got a wine glass here with what looks like black wine and that's because there's not enough light coming through this dark uh, wine but in this this shot here the C shot I have a white card behind the wine glass so I ought to be able to lighten that red wine up and make it look uh, more red and inviting so I'm just going to use a nice little a, a nice big brush and paint with white so again, switching the foreground and background colors, and I'm going to reveal a little bit of that white card right behind the red wine. So I hit that a couple times. Let's go back to full opacity there. Yeah. And so now I've got sort of a little glow in the wine, and there's also a sort of a little edge halo happening there that sort of helps to draw your eye towards that wine glass. Um, very kind of subtle effect there. Okay, now I'm going to look at my original image just to see if there's anything else in there. Um, I think this, the the cork in this layer is is better than that. Let's see. Yeah, I'm going to use this cork. There's also a little edge there um, along the along the bottle that might be kind of interesting. Let's let's see. I'm going to go back to my combined image here and see if I can bring in a little of this uh, this cork to show up. Um, so I'm just going to sort of feather it in here. I'm going to create sort of a more of a 3D effect. So I want just the center of that to kind of highlight, give it a nice rounded look. All right. And let's see, um, maybe I, I want to bring out that little edge. So I'll go back to 100% and just kind of just feather that in. You know, actually, I don't like it. It's not a clean enough reflection. So let's take it out. I'll switch the foreground and paint with black. Uh, OK, now I'm happy. All right, let's move on. Let's see. Uh, our next candidate here is the uh, the D shot, and this one has some nice lighting on these leaves. I like the lighting on these leaves, and along the rock here, we've got sort of nice texture in the rock, and the stem of the glass looks really good. But there's nothing else in this shot that I want to use. Um, so here we go again, holding down the shift key and using the move tool, drag it up. The tab comes forward, drag it down, and let go. And here we go, screen. I'm going to hide the whole thing. Option, click on the layer mask icon, and I get a black layer mask. Now I'm going to get my brush again, and I know that the stem of that glass was really good. So I'm going to just paint the lighting in on that, that stem of the glass. And then I had some nice kind of really uh, edgy uh, skimming light that hits these 
these leaves. So I'm going to just sort of paint that in. And paint in some of this, the texture on that, on that rock. And I think maybe there's some interesting stuff going on in there. Uh, maybe a little bit over here. I know it kind of hit that. I'm going to keep it off of most of this and we'll use lighting from the other shot for the other leaves. All right, so now we're at the last layer of lighting. I'm going to option, uh, hold down the, the shift key and my move tool again, dragging it up dropping it down in register, uh, change this to screen. And this one has really nice light on this leaf and a nice reflection in the glass. And that's about it. So we will hide it again, hold down Option or Alt, click on the layer mask icon, I get a black layer mask. And now all I have to do is paint in uh, where I want this light to appear. And I'd like it to appear on this leaf. So it's got a kind of really interesting edge lighting on that leaf. It's very cool. And maybe a little bit in the on the rocks here. And I think these leaves had a kind of more inch. Oops. I've got a little double image there. So I'm going to Hide that and we'll just just paint a little bit of light on these on the, this leaf here and sort of look at this 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 part of the rock is lit. Uh, let's see if I can just sort of maybe edge that in over. reduce the opacity a little bit so I can kind of paint it in gradually and I just want to lighten that top ledge just a little bit. And maybe just a hint of extra light coming in from this this side like that. So I can get kind of illustrative with the quality of the light. All right, let's go back and make sure I label my layers. So later on I can look at these and decide which images were used and it's easy to go back and compare to the original shot to see what else I want to add. Like for instance, I want this nice reflection on this glass. So I'm going to come back over here. That's my top E layer. So I'm highlighting the layer mask because I'm going to I don't want to paint into the image so I'm always checking to make sure that I which uh, which item here is selected whether the image thumbnail or the layer mask is selected I want to make sure those lines are around the layer mask when I do my painting and now I'm going to paint that uh, reflection in the glass in there and we'll paint this in uh, go back to 100% get it nice and strong and I, I don't like the shape of it though so I'm going to now kind of slice it down, kind of create a, a sliver effect and feather it just a little bit. Okay, now I'm, I'm pretty happy. And we've, uh, we've come a long way with this. Uh, we've got some nice effects going on here. One other thing to show you, um, I can actually change the color of any light source. So I'm going to, I'm actually going to do it with this one here. Um, we're going to colorize this light source. So I'll do that by adding a hue saturation adjustment, but I want it to be, I want that hue saturation adjustment to be grouped with this layer. So the shortcut for that is to hold down the option or alt key and you get the uh, hue saturation adjustment 
in this case from the bottom of the layers panel rather than up in the adjustments panel because I, by holding down option or alt when I select this I get new layer options and it allows me to use this little checkbox right here use previous layer to create clipping mask okay so that will group this adjustment onto the underlying layer in a way that uh, isolates it to just that layer. So this hue saturation adjustment will be calculated onto this layer before this layer is screened into the underlying layers. That's exactly what I want. So I'm going to check colorize and now I get to actually change the color of that light. So you can see I, I, I'm going to go for kind of a blue light and maybe a, a little more saturated here and that gives me now this a completely different character for that for that light and I you know I can do that maybe with this one maybe we'll make this light a little bit redder so I'll go ahead and get the hue saturation adjustment here while holding down the option or alt key I get the new layer options use previous layer to create clipping mask um, we'll make this uh, magenta light and colorize we'll get this over in this sort of range here so I, I, I want a little uh, more color into the rocks and the leaves and you know I can decide how much of that effect I want or how saturated the effect. if I double click on this again I can go back and edit that get a little more saturation in that maybe it just needs to be a little redder I want it to blend in somehow with the background and have have some kind of extra lighting effect but maybe that's too much so I can change the opacity you can see how much flexibility this approach gives you I can come back in here we'll make that even more saturated and get a richer blue light out of that and there you have it so now I've completed my image composite and all of these different lighting things can be separately controlled and um, just by turning on and off I can see what's happening with each of them and decide if I want to alter them change the intensity of them um, you know, maybe maybe I, I want this to be a little softer or I want more of that label to be uh, to show up I can come back in here and, and revise that just with, with a little more painting and you get the idea So I hope you enjoyed this. I plan on doing some more of these. Um, so stay tuned and uh, be sure to check out my website, uh, which is www.veris.com. I also post uh, all of these tutorials on my blog. So it's worth checking that out from time to time. And that is blog.veris.com. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you soon.